This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I want to talk about uh, cacao or cocoa fruit trees and how to grow them naturally outside in Florida. Uh, don't even have to water them. And they fruit without protection. Well, they do like, uh, if you plan on growing them in full sun, they don't really seem to like it if you aren't going to water them. But in the shade, yes, they can handle it. And I'll show you those, but here's one over here that uh, I planted last year and it's seed grown and it's kind of in a protected spot. It's right there. It's, uh, it's about almost three feet. But that's a protected spot. And we got down to 31 degrees here last year, last winter for five hours. And it really didn't affect anything. It affected some mangoes that were growing in areas where I had already known were bad growing areas, meaning the trouble spots of the yard. Because this is my yard. So... But the cacao, they didn't even seem to, none of them seemed to flinch. We grow our cacao from seed. All of our cacao have been grown from seed and half of them have been grown uh, organically from our, our fruit. I know how they were grown. Maybe not certified organic, but Kind of close, I guess. I can't verify that. We have to get our stuff. I People want to visit here periodically. Believe it or not, over the last almost six years that we've owned this place, I've only had uh, like five people here, five different groups of people. So... Not groups, but one, you know, a couple families and uh, a few couples. Is it five? It might be four. <laughs> but we get the organic certifiers that, that um, come by once a year and inspect everything. Twice a year, sometimes they can show up. Uh, so here's our cacao trees. Our... This one's been a seed grown from a fruit, a tree that I fruited. I had a bunch more. I bought some nursery grown trees and I bought some, or I grew, I had more of my seed grown trees. Not a lot, but like three or four of them. And I practiced in areas uh, and this is, the, and didn't water them for a year. And this is the only one that survived out of like, I think. No more than nine. When you're planting cacao, you got to plant them from seed. You um, just buy the fruit from Montoso Gardens. I always get my fruit from them. It always works. One time it didn't work, but that's because the rats were eating the seeds. Um, but uh, it works and it's cheap. It's like they're in Puerto Rico. M O N T O S S O Gardens. Um, and they have like really big cacao fruit for sale for very inexpensive. So this thing started fruiting in December and came through the, the uh, the freeze fine, it didn't seem to hurt it. And it's got fruit on it now. I see more than one fruit and it's got a lot of flowers. See all those flowers? It's kind of a very easy plant to grow here. I know that's shocking because when I first started and talked about it on tro tro uh, the Tropical Fruit Forum, they like, 
Nobody had done it. Let's put it that way. And I, I'm fairly certain I know why it works and uh, how to make it work. Look at all those flowers. They're in, looks like they're going to be doing like droops. So, did you see the fruit? Where's the fruit? Okay. The fruit is um, right there. And then there's another one. This one, I there it is. Right there. flowers I mean it's so this is what they do um, once they start flowering I guess at like five years of age and um, they don't this is like underneath the, or at the edge of a huge giant legume tree so uh, elephant ear tree I forget this scientific name imagine that um, <laughs> it, but they're beautiful. I mean, it, they're so easy in Florida. It's they, this one I connected to water after a year, after like a year and a half. Uh, when I connected all the nursery-grown pots, plants, the large ones to water. Um, let me get that down there. Uh, like this. Garcinia Intermedia. That's it in here. Uh, I connected this to water, but I use the water during drought. So uh, when it stops raining consistently, usually like January 1st, I turn the water off. And two years ago, I left the water on for four months. I turned it off and on. It's on an artesian drip. Uh, we don't have to use a, uh, a, a pump to deliver our water. It, it, the water pressure from the ground puts it up. But I, and then we turn it off in like April. This year we turned it off in May. I like uh, have it on artesian drip, all these big trees up here, like the, not the sugar apples and not the citrus, but um, all my garcinias and. Um, my earlier planted garcinias, I stopped connecting anything to water because I, I, I don't think it's necessary. And none of this stuff over here is on water. And um, this is a cacao that we planted last, last summer. And when I planted that other one up by the house, and this ginger wasn't, it was like, it's all this growth is from this year. So it was kind of in a not protected spot, except it was under this tree, which loses most of its leaves in the winter. So it's like more sunny than, uh, more sunny in the winter when it's drier. So it's an interesting they're interesting and we have about i don't know i planted over a hundred of the seed seed grown well the seeds are like 21 dollars or 25 dollars delivered and they're fresh from montoso gardens and in puerto rico and um they pretty much all germinate we start them in our biodynamic compost I make compost. Everyone should make compost. This is this is this whole secret that uh, I just cannot believe I can't find any research on. And it's just crazy that I can find that uh, mycelium is used in the uh, the uh, the meat, the the veg vegan meat, and all this other stuff, but. There's not any mention of the mycelium that grows in your food. 
in your plant. That I could find, which, I mean, is this like so people just don't, didn't, don't know this? Um, guess what? If the mycelium is holding your burgers together and giving it substance, it can hold your, your freaking sand together in Florida. And I know now, and I just feel too strongly about this, that, um, the stuff that people don't talk about, it's the stuff that nature grows. And when nature grows the stuff, the mycelium grows in the roots of the plants. And that's called the relationship mycorrhizae. Well, the mycelium, you know, you've seen two trees grow together. It's, they, the fungi are in the plants. And if there's like, what, billions of um, microbiology in one tablespoon of soil, Nobody studies the wild mycelium and nobody even talks about it. And I think that's a dirty, dirty, dirty secret of our food system. Uh, the intelligent microbes aren't even considered while growing food. So I believe in letting what grows on its own stay and to not mess with it. This is for Florida, it's sand. And um, when you do that and you add carbon because you have to like throw wood chips on it when you're just starting out it's just like you can't like not do nothing because it you, got, you want it to speed up so biologically inoculating it with bd 500 horn manure biodynamic horn will speed it up nitrogen fixing trees will speed it up so rather than driving all over the orchard floor to plant your cacao if it hasn't been touched in like 10 years or five years and it looks like overgrown and like healthy I mean look at how healthy this is that's how you tell if your plants are gonna grow because the mycelium is in the stuff that nobody wants, that nobody talks about, the stuff that nature grows. And the mycelium used to be in our food. The mycelium is the only way you're gonna get a balanced system. Only nature can balance a system. There's just, there's just no other way. So these wild areas that nobody talks about, that hold billions and billions of microbes in the soil if you don't disturb them. I mean, nobody likes to be walked on. I mean, it's like, it's all common sense. And if we could develop gateways of wild areas from water areas inland, I'm sure you could transport the water naturally in a growing system. from one water source to another. If you planted it correctly and stayed off of it, it's the, what's wrong with our, our wild systems are completely just being destroyed and all with it is gonna be all everyone's um, spirituality or nature. It's nature's spirituality to me. And, um, uh, if you want to grow your cacao, that's how you do it. You got to like, and you don't have to water it and you kind of don't have to do anything. It's like really crazy. I mean, but it's such common sense. If you're, if what's growing there is healthy, you don't rip it out. You put what you want into it and you 
let what nature wants into it. And so I have some cacao here. I just, I don't know, I had to talk about my mycelium because it's just like so under, mis it's not studied. And I'm sure that that's why people have gotten so dumb is because there's no mycelium in their, in our food system anymore. I'm, I'm positive of that. So these are all cacao that I planted this year. And what I like to do is I plant in, um, I plant in groups of plants. So I start my seeds all in one pot and this one has, it looks like some, let's see, uh, looks like it could be a guanabana and cherimoya. So I planted some cherimoya seeds in here from some horrible cherimoya I bought online. Let's pick too early. <clears throat> anyway, that's how I plant my cacao. Oh, that's kind of how I plant my trees now because I have so many seeds and I see how well the trees do all together. Um, so I know that these are gonna live. They just... I don't have to do, you don't have to do anything in Florida. That's, that's what it's, why I'm like screaming about this because I, I mean, all these different trees that I have here and sure they're, you can't see each individual one, but guaranteed if it was in pots, it would cover probably two acres or an acre at least of pots. Black plastic pots give me anxiety. So does when I hear people cutting down trees, especially if they're cutting down a lot of them and they're big like this. Why would anybody cut that down in Florida? I mean, the mycelium lives, the ancient mycelium lives in the roots of the old trees. I mean, you keep killing all the smart microbes and don't put it in your food. You kind of get where we're at right now with our healthcare in America. And why is, when is somebody, when are people gonna sue, when are governments gonna sue the uh, chemical companies? That's what I wanna know for soil degradation. Ecological degradation. That's what it's called. Complete and utter ecological degradation from monocrop. It just makes me sick and it's like, I don't know. I don't want to witness it firsthand and just be in my one little bubble of the only nature left. That's crazy. So there's a little cacao in here. There's uh, one right here. I guess I could walk up there. I break my rules, but I want to look at it. Sorry, little plants, if I step on you. Ouch. Um, they look good. This is the smaller, this is the yellow one from our fruit, of the same fruit from the big tree we have that's fruiting now. So they're like, they look good. There's other stuff in here, there's the cha-chas, and there's, you know, we have a hundred Luke's Garcinia, so there's a lot of those in here. Um, some of them grow faster than others, and it's a slow game. I mean, there were planted, we planted 200 seeds in the ground here, so I counted a hundred of them. So there's other stuff. There's a big a cha-cha right here. Right there. There it is. <laughs> it's got new leaves on it. It's starting to thicken up and get tall, so that's a good sign. 
Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and that's our cacao. Vero Beach, Florida. Have a good day.